Hi, my name is Lisa and I'm a children's librarian in the mountains of North Carolina. And today I just wanted to go over a few extension activities that we would typically do if we were presenting a letter G story time in the hopes that you might find this helpful for uh, story times that you're doing as well. So we begin an alphabet focus story time by creating a puzzle around the focus letter of the day. And we've made these puzzles out of word art and clip art, but you can also buy a lowercase letter puzzles from Lavinia Pop on Teachers Pay Teachers, or you can get uppercase puzzles either um, in color or in black and white on My Teaching Station. So I will link to that in the description of the video in case you're interested in those. But we don't put all the pieces up. We'll be holding those pieces in our hand and give the children clues. This is a musical instrument that you could play and they might guess guitar. If the children are very young, you just show them the picture and say, what's this a picture of? Can you hear the g -g guitar? And they are usually so excited to see, once you've put the puzzle together, that it made either an uppercase or lowercase letter G. I would typically do one or the other, not both, on any given um, story time morning. And then we sing a song, and the song goes like this. We are learning letter G, letter G, letter G. We are learning letter G, 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 g. And the reason I do that action is because in our county, the children in pre-K and kindergarten are using the Letterland curriculum, and that is this action symbol that they use to prompt the correct sound for letter G. Golden girl is g guzzling something to drink. So then we sing a s verse for each picture on the puzzle. So we would say gorilla. And if you're in a hurry, you just tell the children what action you want to do. But if you have the time, you ask the children, what action could we do for gorilla? Do you want to do this when we sing about gorilla? All right, well, we're going to sing gorilla starts with letter G, letter G, letter G. Gorilla starts with letter G, g, g. And then you just work your way around the puzzle, and the children just seem to have a great time. They're actually a little sad if you leave one of the puzzle pieces off. So that would be our very first extension activity, and then we would read a book that has a letter G in the title of it, and then we would uh, introduce some other extension activities, which I'm going to show you now. So one of the extension activities that we have in our kit, we actually have... Um, a list of a variety of extension activities to choose from and then whichever story time provider is using the kit they just choose the activities that work best for them. So this is one that they could choose from. It's My Silly Billy Goat and you would sing the song um, My Silly Billy Goat eats clothes off the line, clothes off the line, clothes off the line. My Silly Billy Goat eats clothes off the line as soon as I hang them up. Now, before you started singing the song, you would have handed out to all the children that are there some clothing item. And then on the next verse, you would encourage the children, if they have the clothing item that you're singing about, to come and put that item on the board. So the next verse is, my silly billy goat eat shirts and pants, shirts and pants, shirts and pants. My silly billy goat eat shirts and pants as soon as I hang them up. The next verse would be, my silly billy goat eats socks and shoes. And any of the children who have socks and shoes would put them on the board. And then, my silly billy goat eat, eats hats and coats as soon as I hang them up. So I love this particular extension activity because we usually have enough pieces for our story time crowd to place items on the board. This is the board that I take around into schools with me, but we have a larger um, flannel board for actual story time here at the library. So this is a fun one because usually there's enough pieces for every child to get to participate in this extension activity. So now let me get another one ready for you. All right, so now I have my flannel board set up for uh, the activity, the extension activity, the green grass grows all around. So as I put these pieces on the board, I would have the children, I would say, you know, I'm putting the ground on the board when there's a hole in the ground and there's a tree that's growing in the hole but the green grass is growing all around, all around. And this song is a call and repeat song, so it's great for children who don't happen to know the words or the tune. So we would start by singing, there was a tree, and they would repeat, there was a tree, all in the woods, all in the woods, the prettiest little tree, the 
prettiest little tree that you ever did see that you ever did see now the tree was in the hole and the hole was in the ground and the green grass grew all around all around and the green grass grew all around and then you would add the nest now in that tree now in that tree there was a nest there was a nest the prettiest little nest the prettiest little nest that you ever did see that you ever did see and the nest was in the tree and the tree was in the hole and the hole was in the ground and the green grass grew all around all around and the green grass grew all around and you would keep going with in the nest there was an egg and on the egg there was a bird and on the bird there was a feather feather and on the feather there was a bug, a bug, and the green grass grew all around, all around, and the green grass grew all around. So I hope you'll enjoy maybe trying that call and response extension activity for letter G. And let me see what else I've got. Another fun activity to do for a letter G story time is the song Mother Goonie Bird. And I will link to a video of it, but I'll also, in case you don't feel like going there, I'll go ahead and get give you at least kind of an idea of what that song is like. So you would sing with the children, Mother Goony Bird had many chicks, many chicks had Mother Goony Bird, and they couldn't walk, and they couldn't talk. They could only go like this one wing, and then um, all the children were flapping one wing while you sing the next verse, Mother Goony Bird had many chicks, many chicks had Mother Goony Bird, and they couldn't walk and they couldn't talk. They could only go like this, both wings, and then you're gonna add one foot, you're gonna add both feet, you're gonna add nodding your head, and then you're gonna add turning around, and the final thing they'll do is sit down, and hopefully then they'll be ready for another story that has a letter G in the title of it. Another fun extension activity is called Icky Sticky Sticky Bubblegum. And I'm going to link to a classroom doing that. It's my favorite video for Icky Sticky Sticky Bubblegum. And um, I always get the children are always asking to have to do that one again. So I hope you'll enjoy that as well. I will link to a video of what I'm about to explain to you. But because G can make its hard sound and soft sound, it might be worth trying this little uh, Mexican hat dance. I would cover up the C part of this card if I was working with younger children and only talk about G E, G E, G I, and G Y. When um, G is followed by E, I, or Y, it's usually going to make it soft sound of J like J. So um, you would encourage the children to sing this in sort of a Mexican hat dance um, tune. G-E-G-I-G-Y. G-J. G-E. And each time they're saying G-E or G-I or G-Y, they're um, kicking one foot out like they were doing the Mexican hat dance. So G-E-G-I-G-Y. G-J. G-E-G-I-G-Y. G-J. G E G Y G I G E G I G Y G G and um, then if you read Bart George you will be able to explain to them why the G is making a soft sound instead of the hard sound of G. Now that's a lot of information for young children. I would maybe share that with kindergarten age children and um, I think it just gives you so much more credibility when you're doing a story time with parents and you can let them know that some of these phonics secrets, not teaching, not belaboring it, just making them aware. Here's when G might make a sound different than the G sound that we've been talking about throughout the entire story time. So the reason that we do share information like that is because of research like this. Phonemic awareness has actually been shown to be a more potent predictor of reading success than intelligence, vocabulary, or listening comprehension. So anytime we can just play around with the sounds that letters make and make it fun, we are doing a great service for our patrons, both young and old. So I wanted to say if you are interested in getting a tip sheet of extension activities, I would be happy to send it to you if you want to email me and I will include that email right here on the slide. And oh, there's also another 
song that you could do for a letter G story time is Down on Grandpa's Farm, and I don't have any manipulatives to go along with that, so I will just link to a video where you can hear that song. We also have created some bookmarks for our letter G story time, and I'd be happy to share that with you as well, and you could edit it, edit out you know, our library information and put your own library information in there. So you could email me for that if you would like that. The last thing we do in a story time is we try to have a friend that we can bring around. In this case, it is a Goonie bird <coughs> who has a delightful sound. And we bring this around to each child. And if they would like, they could say G says G or J. And uh, to the Goonie bird, and then the Goonie bird might say, good job. Sometimes the children like to feed the Goonie bird something that starts with a letter G, like maybe he'd eat some g grapes. Um, you could decide whether or not that is too um, likely to spread germs, but I do find that if you're able to have a, some sort of touching sense with children, that goes a long way. Maybe he could just come around and um, tell them good job when he they have been able to tell him that G can say G or J. And then we come around with stamps to stamp their hands. Uh, actually more like their arm or their wrist because if they if we stamp their hands they wash that away fairly quickly so we're going to stamp that on their wrist and um, that way when they go home they don't have to remember to take home a piece of paper they don't have to remember to take home the um, bookmark the whatever caregiver they are with might say what's that on your arm and it gives the children an opportunity to say oh yes the lady from the library came and she did a letter g story time and they can share whatever they remember about the library or about letter g or about the books we read so that is all i have for you today so in the words of tigger ta-ta for now <laughs>